I've had my Anchor Solix X1 system for two months now. Do I have any regrets? What are the new features? I'll let you know all the details. If you're wondering how the Anchor Solix system was installed, I've got a full walkthrough of the install process and why I chose it, links in the description, as well as a full disclaimer. Speaking of which, this is a sponsored post and it was a sponsored install. Australians have gotten super excited about the cheaper home battery scheme and a lot of them have been sucked into offers for really massive battery systems like 40, 50 kilowatt hours, but there's a trap with those battery systems. And I explain it in a separate video in more detail, link in the description. The short form version is, the catch is the inverter. They only have usually five kilowatt inverter for these cheapskate battery systems. And that means your battery system will be underpowered. When, when our all electric house is totally cranking along and lots of things are running at once this system can handle it perfectly fine i've run it with an ev charger charging my mg477 electric car at the full seven kilowatt rate and a washing machine and microwave heating some food and a hot water heat pump and all the lights and all the normal things going on in the house all of them running at once not a problem and you know why it's because this is a dual five kilowatt system both of them working together as a virtual 10 kilowatt that means it has the power to cover the draw of a lot of all electric homes that don't have a ducted system we have reverse cycle split systems which are a lot more efficient anyway the other benefit of having this dual five kilowatt system of inverters DC hybrid, by the way, connected directly to solar is that they're more efficient. You get more of the solar power directly stored into the battery without power loss. And we can have four strings of solar, two on each inverter, which means that we have solar covering pretty much almost all of our roof and in four different directions, maximizing the times of day when we can generate solar output our installers Resync Solar put in some extra panels facing the morning sun, which helps to boost the early morning output, which is handy, as well as some extra panels for the late afternoon sun. In between, we've got lots of other solar panels, which we installed about four and a half years ago, a total about 12 kilowatts of capacity. Excellent. It is managing perfectly well, and I'll catch up with you for a six monthly update to let you know if it's still been reliable and if Amber has worked well with this Anchor Solix X1 system. So far it's been mostly good. Um, yeah, let's, let's see how it works. I've made clear chapters for this video. So if you want to jump around and see different sections like Anchor's Amber integration or how I use the app, you can easily click down in the scroll bar and jump to the section that interests you most or just watch the whole thing. Okay, let's go. Firstly, let's talk about three big new changes and features for the Anchor Solix battery ecosystem. Right, so the first thing is support for Amber Electric Wholesale Electricity. Please contribute. It really helps my independent, honest journalism for you. Anchor systems are fully integrated now. All the inverters, all the battery versions into Amber. I've been using it for well over a month now and it's worked pretty well apart from the occasional glitch. And the only problem I had is when I've had NBN outages and Amber couldn't communicate with my battery system. Well, that's not Anchor's fault and that's not Amber's fault. That's because the Liberal Party chose to give my street recycled Foxtel cable for our NBN. Anyway, how has Amber gone? Actually, I think the Anchor Solix X1 responds pretty quickly to Smart Shift once it's realized how you use your system. I tend to run my battery down to about 30% by the time I go to sleep and I leave a 20% buffer in case of unexpected outages. In the morning on a hot sunny day like today, the battery 30 kilowatt hours in total is usually full by 11 o'clock in the morning. And once I use aircon and other things, the automatic solar curtailment with Amber and Anchor talking together 
works perfectly. It follows the load. And what that means is if I turn the air conditioner on late in the morning or I turn a dishwasher on or something like that, Amber will tell the anchor battery to increase the amount of solar generation that's allowed to be generated in the system. So my house is fully covered and not using any grid electricity. And after that load has fallen down again, it'll reduce the solar generation to the amount required because that's one really important thing you need to know. During large parts of the day on the East Coast, the wholesale electricity price is pretty much zero or often negative. In South Australia, for huge parts of the day, it's zero or negative. So to get the best value from your Amber integration with your Anchor battery system, you have to make sure that solar curtailment works perfectly. Otherwise, you'll get penalized for exporting solar generation that's excess to your house needs during the day. And nobody wants that. You don't want to get punished for exporting solar. You want to get extra credits anyway. I'll do a separate video about all my first Amber battery integrated experience and the first bill and how that goes. So you can know what to expect when you get yours. Let's go on to the second new thing. That is the Anker V1 EV charger. It's a cabled charger and it was announced at All Energy Australia at the end of October. It's available immediately across Australia and it integrates well into the Anker Solix X1 battery system. Uh, I know a few people who've got them and they're quite happy with it. Uh, interesting feature that's quite unique is gesture control. Um, you can also use the app if you don't want to use the gesture control. And, and third feature that people have been asking about a lot is does the Anker Solix X1 system have a gateway? For full home backup, whether you have the AC anchor or DC anchor system, uh, yes, that's coming in the first three months of 2026. It was also announced at All Energy Australia. It's a very sleek looking system, both the V1 charger and the power dock gateway system uh, look exactly the same as the battery. They're the powder coated metal look, so they'll fit in with the aesthetics without any problems. Okay, let's walk through the app. This is the home screen. Obviously it shows you very similar to many other home battery apps. The amount of solar generated right now, grid export amount, home load amount, and the battery percentage as well as the status. You can look through day by day, things like CO2 savings. I'm not sure that's of huge value. I don't know how that value is calculated probably would rather have some other information there on the home screen, to be honest. You can look at solar generation, home load, battery level and usage, and grid level and usage by day, by week, by month, or by year, as you can see here. Ideally, I would like an hourly view as well. Hopefully that can be enabled in the new year. As you can see here, you can see how the solar generation changes during the day when curtailment happens with Amber. As an example, the solar generation obviously drops a lot because Amber stops the Anker Solix X1 battery exporting during times of negative prices. At the bottom, you can see more details. Now you can also have a look at each and individual battery module and see what percentage it is. There all should be pretty similar percentage each during the day. I'm hiding my battery serial numbers. That's why there's a little battery logo there. And you obviously you can manage the system. You can add other people to have app access as well. If you want family members to have access, you can either give them access to the same admin account you have, or you can also give them like a lower level of access. So that's quite handy. Uh, and in the menus, what can you do there? Well, there's modes, obviously, how much you set aside for outages. That's an important setting. I choose self-consumption. You can also choose uh, smart scheduling. You can also manually set the battery to go into off-grid mode. I did that for a couple of days when the Amber Anchor integration was still in the beta testing period and the 
automatic curtailment wasn't working and I didn't want to get penalized for exporting dozens of kilowatt hours in the middle of the day. So I just pressed off grid and uh, yeah, the Solix X1 for the next few hours until I turned that feature off, just cut itself off from the grid and supplied the house with the solar coming from the rooftop and the battery capacity. Bluetooth control has been very handy because my NBN is unfortunately not great quality in my street. We've had three outages of several hours just this last week. Bluetooth control means I can check the battery status if I'm at home, even if I'm waiting for the NBN status to come back on. Display settings. I wish Anchor would allow more customization of that rather than just on off and how long it stays on after someone walks past. Ideally, I would want the display to have a sh timing schedule so you can set it to turn off between 9 p.m. and 7 p.m. or whatever time suits you because the batteries are a couple meters from our bedroom window and I don't like it when they occasionally glow in the middle of the night when they're doing something. Firmware updates, obviously Anchor can send these to your system over Wi-Fi or if you've got LAN cable connection or you might have the 4G Anchor Solix X1 dongle. Anyway, all of those methods can be used for the Solix X1 to communicate with the internet and get new software updates over time. Thanks for liking, subscribing and sharing my videos. It really helps me make more videos like this for you and have a look at the suggested videos up above. I'm pretty sure you'll like those as well. Thanks and see you later.